So let's start off by understanding what is an API or what is an application programming interface. And I won't ask you to define these terms for me and I won't tell you some definitions either. So now let's together understand what is an API. So let's go back to the days where it was all simple and you were in charge of doing everything that you wanted to do without technology at your fingertips and services to be consumed. The best option was to do things manually. For example, if I wanted to book a pickup truck, I would go to the store that is a pickup agency to talk to the service provider and I would book the pickup truck. And if I had to apply for a credit card or a debit card, I would go to the bank and take the card application form and fill it and apply for a new card and as well if i wanted to get a new pair of shoes or if i wanted to buy any trousers or t-shirts i would surely hop up to the nearest shopping center and get the things that i want so now let's take an example of a real world scenario where we want to book a pickup truck as we want to shift all the items to a new home so the best option for us is to go to the pickup service and talk to the manager that we have so here is our user so this is our truck, this is our truck owner, this is the pickup service center manager and the next thing will be to place the order for the pickup truck based on the information that we need to provide to the manager like the place of delivery, time, the pickup date and the address. And now your request is well received at the store and he tells you that sure sir, please let me check the details and I'll get back to you with the confirmation. So he then calls up to the truck owner to ask if uh, he has a truck available. Based on his response to the order request, he either will confirm or reject the request. Okay, if he doesn't have it, then he'll surely reject it. But if he does have it, then he will surely accept the request. Mostly in these cases, the requester actually would inform him to schedule it as per the availability of the vehicle. And that is how you book a pickup truck. Okay, so if the condition is satisfied, you will get the information back and you will let them know that whether the booking has been confirmed or not. Okay. So now let's see what happened when things actually changed. Things and people started migrating towards application and websites and websites that could provide them with the same service at the reach of their fingertips or just a click away from their desktop and laptops. So they got a form where they could fill in the details of what type of service they want and then make the booking. And based on the availability of the truck, it would automatically let them know if their booking was successful and the amount they were supposed to be charged with. In the form, you would get all the information that you should fill in order to make the request, starting from the name, date of pickup, address and the type of truck that you need. That is, it might be a mini truck or a large one. And when you clicked on the submit button, it would fly the request into the servers and get you the result back. And the best part is, it wasn't limited to that and now it is so powerful enough is to draw information from not just one agency or service provider but from several more who can actually deliver the same service for far better prices and tariffs compared to the one with whom you were connected for a longer time so the next time you try and click the submit button the application compares the prices of the agencies which provides the service and we find that agency a is giving us the cheapest price so we select that and place the order. And that's how the magic actually happened. We started off by speaking to three people and doing the manual work to get our booking done to a single application which gave us a chart of prices to compare and we were able to book the pickup truck sitting at home with the most reasonable price. And this was all possible by the help of the APIs or what we call as application programming interfaces. For every communication that you see here, from the user to the application, from the application to the form, from the form to the user clicking on the order button, from that to the backend servers of the, all the agencies that we have and the response back to the applications from the servers. All that you see here is the magic of APIs. Now with the help of APIs, you can book a pickup truck, apply for a credit card and shop online with just a few clicks and all of this is possible today with APIs and the way we are able to communicate with services using APIs. I don't want you to think of answers just yet but keep thinking of all the possibilities that we have when we use APIs. Now you have seen these examples and I would want to ask you what do you feel has made it really special? Yes, it's communication. 
and that is what has throttled our ways of sending and receiving data and information. With APIs, you are not just talking to the application, but also with the services and databases. The operating system that you use currently, the mouse click on the media player on your laptop, the touch of the Spotify app on your phone to access songs. All this is brought to you by the magic of APIs. So API or the short form of what we call the application programming interface is a software mediator that allows two applications to talk to each other. So the application is basically a software program which is designed for the specific use case and when two program wants to communicate they want an interface through which they can talk to each other, isn't it? So when two programs actually want to communicate, they would want to have an interface through which they can talk to each other. The user here using the application is trying to communicate with the server of the agency which provides the service and the communication that you see here is based on the request made by the user and the response given by the server. And the way we talk is basically using our APIs. But you might ask me why we call it as an interface. So I'll give you a small example and you will surely be able to relate to that. If you're using your phone right now and you see all those buttons and tabs which help you navigate through your apps and settings, those are basically an interface. More precisely, it's called as user interface or user experience interface. So the user wants to talk to the application and it needs a medium to interact. So it has a user interface. Else, you would still be typing commands of ls, dir, mkdir, and copycon, and cat to read your files. Similarly, services and apps need a medium to communicate, and that's your APIs. The simple visual here tells us how the API request flow and how the response comes back to the user. It's all about the request that has been sent and the response that has been received. I hope you're already starting to get the hang of what APIs are. Let's move on. So when you write your applications that might have a lot of information that could be shared or what could be reused, right from the database that you have or the method or function or the source that you currently have as a part of your application. And as I've already explained before about a well-architected application, all the code and functionality will be written in a way that it can be later reused by other applications or developers. So in this case, if other programs or developers want to make use of these services and want to make use of this data that you have, then the programs have to talk to the applications using the APIs provided by the application itself, that is basically provided by you, and the API can provide them with the necessary information that they need. For example, if you want to get the details for the number of products or prices that a certain category of product has on Amazon or any other shopping website, you need to use the APIs to access it. And those APIs will be given to the developers by Amazon itself. And another very important example can be cited here is if you want to create an account on social media website, you basically go to the website and get it done using its user interface. Okay, but if you want to do that programmatically, then you will need the APIs from the social media application so that you can write the code to make the API call and create the account. Okay, so in this way applications and the developers are able to communicate with each other and use their feature by using the APIs. And this is how we actually integrate applications together by using the APIs. And when we talk about application integration, so the next time when you think of using a service provided by other application and you wish to integrate it in your program or software, think of APIs. APIs are everywhere now. Talk about Instagram, talk about GitHub, talk about YouTube or even Twitter. When you need the information on how to use the features of these applications in your application, make sure you check the APIs. So when we talk about HTTP APIs, as we have discussed before as well, that it's a client server request response model. And if you see here, the client or the user we have here makes a request by hitting a URL on the browser. And then what happens next? Obviously the page gets loaded on his or her screen, isn't it? If he obviously has an internet connection and there might be various types of data that uh, the website can have. Like it can be music files or there can be image files or that could be some video files as well. And remember that all this data that is being propagated is over the HTTP protocol. Okay, so the images, the content that you see on the web pages that you have 
are basically using the HTTP. And with the REST APIs, we have our clients work with the API calls made over the HTTP protocol using the HTTP methods like get, post, put, delete, patch. And they work on the request body templates with XML or JSON or HTTP calls. And the simple CRUD operations are as shown as below here in the example. So the get actually is used to receive or read a particular resource. The post is basically used to create a new entry or a resource. And put is basically used to update an existing resource. And delete, obviously, it is used to delete an existing resource. And patch, it is used to update a resource, but it does not need all the payload to be provided in the call. It is, you can consider this as a partial update. And to make REST calls, you can use SDKs or the software development kits or Postman or REST clients to call or execute any REST APIs. But mostly when we are working on programming languages like Python or Java, we make use of the SDKs provided by the application itself so that we can make the request calls to the APIs and get the work done. And the third one we have is the WebSocket API. As I have already mentioned before, TCP is a full duplex two-way communication channel where unlike HTTP or REST, we don't wait for the client's request or the server's response. Here the client and the server talk independently to each other over a single TCP connection. So in WebSockets, you have the connection open request, which is completed with the initial handshake that you see here. And then when the connection is open, you can send bidirectional messages, which will be persistent over the connection. And here, if any of the parties actually close the connection, it actually ends or closes the communication channel. Okay, so each of the parties have a right to actually close the connection. And in that sense, it actually closes the communication channel as well. 